Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo of the 2022 Honda Passport and its base 7 speaker audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review, we're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio adjustments, inputs, controls, speaker locations, then we're going to go out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now if you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video, we've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And I recommend listening with headphones so you hear exactly what I hear in the driver's seat. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. This is the Trail Sport edition of the Honda Passport. It's a very cool model, it's for people who feel like they need a little bit more ruggedness than your standard Honda Passport offers, so getting a little bit more aggressive tires. Kind of a little bit of an appearance upgrade as well, if you ask me. You've got some of the orange badging and stitching inside, some unique wheels. If you do want to see more on the Passport, check out the links in the description. We've got a highway fuel economy test, an actual infotainment demo as well, and of course a DM review. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed wave files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system, and high quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory default, so let's take a look at those now. Infotainment screen here from Honda, now all coming with volume knobs as they should. A little bit of a weird angle to this screen, but at least it's built into the, the dashboard nicely. Let's go here to sound from the media screen. Good responsiveness, nice resolution as well. Starting off, we've got adjustments for bass, mid-range, and treble. Let's go through those now. Pretty good range of adjustability there. I'm, I'm impressed, even though it's only plus six and minus six, you get a lot of adjustment there. Then you have a separate screen right here for your subwoofer volume from low to high. Let's go through that. Not a huge difference there, but I do have to say I appreciate that Honda puts a subwoofer in a car like this. Even on the base system, it can go a long way in allowing these speakers and the doors to take care of a little bit more of the mid-range sounds and the bass can come from the back. Below that, you have adjustments for front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance, and then a speed volume compensation adjustment. So as you get going faster, the music will increase in volume. We're gonna leave that off. And that is it for audio adjustments. For audio controls in the Passport, you have a nice volume knob here, good clicks. I could go for a larger knob. You can tell this is something they added on a little bit after the fact from back in the late 20 teens when Hondas were coming with a volume slider, but it clicks well enough. It just seems like in a vehicle that's kind of chunky and large and off-roady like this, you'd have a larger volume knob. Then you have volume click adjustments on the left side of the wheel here. For track selection, no physical controls for tracks on the screen. So if you're say in navigation, and your passenger wants to change the track, they'd have to click up here to go to the media and then go through right there. Or the driver can do so with left-handed controls as well. Audio inputs in the Passport. Audio inputs in the Passport. You have your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio, and they're kind of scattered. Well, I guess you can click here. And, nope, just kidding, that's a, that's a hot change. So what you need to do is click right there. You got all your inputs. Let's go back to USB, if we click that, there you go. Sirius XM, FM, AM, Bluetooth, a 3.5 auxiliary input jack, really. Uh, yep, there it is in there. I'm sure you can't see it on camera, but there's an aux input, as well as a USB-A port, and that provides connection for CarPlay, uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, and that seems to be it. So what are you missing? Well, no sort of streaming functionality. You don't see any Spotify or anything like that, and no USB type C either. Not really the end of the world, but something good to know. Speaker locations. As I said, this is the seven speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, you've got a door woofer there. One, tweeter, two, three, four on the other side. Coming into the back row, door woofer, or maybe a mid-range is probably kind of a combo. Five, six, and somewhere in the trunk here, we should have a subwoofer making seven. Kind of a slow lift gate in the Passport. Yep, 
there it is in there, subwoofer making seven. All right, I'm gonna get my stuff put away here so we can get out on the road. If this system didn't have the subwoofer, it would be one of the worst systems I've ever tested. The subwoofer does help it a lot just to have some power, 
but I don't know if y'all could hear, especially you who listen to our sound tests regularly, how much distortion and, and weird artifacts we were getting listening to that part of the song right there. Very weird uh, drops in power when the thumps came in. And we're at bass EQ right now, not sounding good, not sounding true to recording. Fortunately, it's not harsh on my ears, and that's something I noticed from the higher end Conda systems. When you get the center speaker and kind of more of the 10 speaker systems, it gets hard on your ears, it's poorly balanced. But this is just weak and, and kind of strange in its balancing. But speaking of power, for this next song, we'll turn the bass all the way up and the subwoofer and see what happens. there for a second then it calms down let me see if I can turn it down and then back up yeah I don't know I guess less distortion than I was expecting but not a whole great amount of power either again better than if it had no subwoofer though My thoughts on the seven speaker bass audio system here in the Honda Passport. That last song shows you very well why this is a below average system. The bass came in, the chorus, and it was it was weird, it was messy. We were losing power here and there on the bass hits. It's not impressive, it's not a great look. Chris, driving the system earlier this week, he claimed he would give it a C. And I, I can't side with him on that one because C would imply that it's an average system. It sounds just okay, fine, middle of the road. This is a little bit below average, so it's getting a D. It's a D plus, and that subwoofer makes it really, really close. It gives it that plus, but it's it's below just getting out of your, ah, it's fine sort of system. Now, to be fair, this is the base system. You can get an upgraded one in the premium level passports, but this is also a $45,000 car. And believe me, this is not a sound system worthy of a $45,000 car. And it's a shame because Honda's with the new Bose system sound pretty good, but 
all the Hondas without the new Bose system are not that good. It's a shame because I like driving Hondas. Just don't like listening to their stereos. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Passport, check the links in the description. We actually really do like this car. There's a lot of great things about it. So check the links for those, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.